Okay, we're recording. So I'm excited to be with you guys today. I have so much to share. I'm going to try to squeeze as much teaching as I can into the little bit of time we have. So that's why it's a good thing we're recording, Beverly. And um, you guys will be able to go back and, and access this recording later, especially if I'm moving too quickly. But I, I want to make sure I pack as much in. So you may feel as if you're sipping water from a fire hose today. I apologize in <laughs> advance. I apologize in advance. But just to introduce myself, my name is Eric Johnson, creator and CEO of TeamZ. I'm coming to you live from my home office in beautiful San Diego, California, which is amazing that we are all connected worldwide at the same time. I think that's just incredible. And um, <clears throat> what I want to do today is I'm going to show you Teamsy. Some of you I, I can tell are using it based on your chat as I was coming in. Some of you maybe aren't using it yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to take you through, show you how easy it is to set up. And then I'm going to walk you through how to do a power hour. Okay, so you can get all your income producing activity done in less than an hour a day. In the beginning stages, if you're new to the business, it'll be much less than an hour a day. And you'll work your way up to make, taking a full hour as you, as you grow your team and your business. But before I dive into that, I also want to give you a little bit of teaching about the system that Teamsy's built upon. Okay, and that system is called relationship marketing. It's very important because Teamsy is more than just a software that makes you more productive. It's an approach. It's a different approach to the business. And I know a lot of you may, may have been attracted to Teamsy because you've seen my ads where I say, you can build this business without being salesy or a cheesy salesperson. You know, there are ways to be authentic. And that is where my heart is. And that's what the system is built on. So I want to teach you a little bit about relationship marketing. Then we're going to dive right into Teamsy. I will also stay on for question and answer. So if you have questions that come up, I'll be happy to, to stay on after we're done with the training and answer questions. Sometimes that's the best content is whatever you guys can think of to throw at me at the end. So <clears throat> let's dive in. And I've got everybody muted just as a, as a precautionary type thing, but you do have your grownups. And so I've given you the ability to unmute yourself if the spirit moves you, okay? All right. <clears throat> so let's dive right in here first. And this is what I want to talk to you about at the outset, which is how to systemize your success with relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. That's one of our hashtags. You guys can use that now if you like. So there's three pieces. One is you got to have a system. We're going to talk about that tonight. You can be really great at relationships. Some people just have it, but without a system, their, their hair's on fire and you know they waste more than they keep. Relationship marketing is the system we're going to use, and we're going to help you do it in less than an hour a day. You guys got all that stuff? Does that sound good? Okay, so my background, uh, I, I, I recognize that I'm introducing myself for the first time. So just to kind of give you my background, direct sales is not where I, I don't come from the direct sales industry. I'm not one of those guys that's been you know, the network marketing guru for 20 years. I, I've been a professional business coach and consultant for 20 years, though, helping business owners build their business based on authentic relationships and systemizing that. I fell into the direct sales industry about seven years ago completely by accident. Honestly, just to kind of give you guys the background, I was working for a large consulting firm. I really enjoyed my work. I had achieved everything I set out to do in life. I had a great uh, you know, great salary and benefits. I had a beautiful office that overlooked the Pacific Ocean. I was like, man, I really made it. But at the same time, I felt completely stuck. There was nowhere left to grow. I'm a gr How many of you are growth people? I love to grow and I was done growing. I was at, there was nowhere for me to go in that career path. I was just, I was like, this is it. Enjoy the next 30 years of your life or maybe more, right? If you're doing well. At the same time, I also felt like financially, I, I just wanted to earn a little bit more. I've got four kids and I live in Southern California and they eat a lot of food, right? And <laughs> um, as one of my mentors used to say, we enjoy food with our meals. So I, you know, I wanted to earn a little bit more income. I just felt like I was always stressed and worried about money. Also, I never got to see my family. This was the most important thing for me was I never got to see my family. I was always, here's a shot of, of the fam here. I was always working. I never saw them. I honestly, I used to joke that I only saw my kids wearing pajamas because when I left for work in the morning, they were in their pajamas still. When I came home in the evening, they were back in their pajamas getting ready for bed. And that's all I had ever seen. You know, I had seen my father working hard to provide for us and not being there that often. And I thought, this is what we do. But, you know, I honestly wanted something different for my family. I wanted to be present for them. And so the network marketing opportunity was a no brainer. How many of you guys think it's a no brainer? 
here's something that I could build a business on the side with zero investment. I mean, honestly, zero, let's be honest, it's zero investment, right? One good night at the pub, you, you spend as much as it takes to start this business. And so I, I was like, this is a great business. The challenge I had was, when am I going to build this business? How am I going to do this? I already don't have any time. And so I really sat down, I got my calendars out, I did some planning, I said, you know, if I could squeeze one hour a day to do this business, I believe I could get it done. So, so once I made that commitment, I said, okay, where are the tools to help me leverage that time? Now, as a business consultant and with many, coaching people in many different industries, it's always, we find out what tools are available, we apply them to the business so that they can leverage time. In our industry, can you believe there weren't any tools? There certainly was nothing based on building relationships, for sure. There was some automated marketing stuff, which I'm going to talk about as we get going a little bit, um, what that means to people when you do automated marketing to them. But there was nothing that worked for what I wanted to do and help me leverage time. So that's kind of how Teamsy came to be. Um, honestly, I took some people to lunch who were much smarter than me and said, this is what I'm thinking. This is the marketplace. Millions of people doing direct sales. They've got no support. What do you think? Could you help me build this? And Teamsy, we, we launched Teamsy just about four and a half years ago. So about four and a half years ago, we launched Teamsy. I sent a text message to 20 people I knew and said, try out Teamsy for me. Tell me what you think. And it's kind of spread like wildfire since then, since then we've had more than 120,000 network marketers use Teamsy, which is so amazing and humbling. And just so you guys have an idea of the results, our active users, they're averaging 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. So our active users are averaging 21 new customers and nine recruits over 90 days. Okay. So that's pretty decent. And I think that you guys would be pretty excited to see that happen and duplicate through your team for the people who are willing to put an hour a day into their business. So let's dive into the topic here, which is relationship marketing. What is relationship marketing? What is relationship marketing? First off, it's a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. It's a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. This is huge because our industry has a bad reputation because so many people feel like they've, they've got a target painted on their backs by their friends and relatives who are just trying to make a sale off of them, right? And so this is important, guys. The relationships are more important than the sales. And if we can get our heart right, the system works amazingly well. Also, this isn't some abstract feel-good concept, relationship marketing. It's a proven system that we follow, always knowing what to do next. I've been teaching this system for 20 years. And it has worked 100% of the time. I just want you guys to know. Okay, so what is relationship marketing? Again, um, it's also a lead generation system. Relationship marketing is a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. You guys need to know how important this is because you are business owners. And the first role of a business owner is to decide on and implement in their business a lead generation system. Which system will you use? There's lots of ways you could approach this business, right? The traditional approach in our industry is cold message and spam every single human being you know and hopefully recruit 1% of them while alienating 99, <laughs> right? How many of you guys are excited for that, that approach? <laughs> it's not exciting. So what we do with relationship marketing is we, um, we generate leads by creating and building relationships. And we're going to explain this, but I want you guys to understand that you're in a lead generation business. Your job is not to sell the products and services of your business. It's to generate leads, to create consumer interest and inquiry, to create consumer interest and inquiry. You with me? Okay. So here's the next principle. Developing and deepening relationships is the paramount duty as a business owner. Why do we need to create inquiry? Why do we need to create interest? So that we can make sales? So that we can recruit? No, we create inquiry, that we create interest so that we can build relationships. And if you guys understand that the relationship is the end game, you will create way more sales and recruits than anyone else in your marketplace. Why is this? Because we turn relationships into advocates. We turn relationships into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. This is the way business, true business has been built since the beginning of human history by building relationships and creating advocates. Does this make sense? 
Otherwise, guys, if you don't want to do it this way, that's fine. You will be hunting down the next best shiny marketing object for the rest of your life, trying to find new leads for your business. Okay, next principle. This is an important one. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. Okay, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. This system does not work for people who are wired on that find them, fleece them, forget them mentality, the traditional sales approach. It comes across as disingenuous. You're, we're building trust. You cannot do anything disingenuous if you want to work with relationship marketing. How many of you are cool with that? Let's sign up for that. That's me. I want to be authentic. And I, let's just be honest for a second because I'm not the first trainer in network marketing that has spoken to this group. You've heard people tell you things that made you feel a little bit like, oh, wow, it's kind of like I'm tricking them or I'm trying to create interest in a way that's not upfront. So this is so important. Relationship marketing depends on trust. We have to approach everything from the standpoint of we're building trust. This is what's important. Now, here's the good news. Trust makes the work fun because if people trust you, even a little bit, you don't have to sell. You don't have to convince you can get right to helping them, which is why we're here, right? Also, trust takes the ickiness from the sales process. You guys said you liked my, American, my Americanisms. This is an official business term, ickiness, right? So, you know, this is that sense that, you, that people are being turned off by you as you're connecting with them. And when you're building trust, they don't feel icky, nor do you doing it with them. And finally, you get to go for yes. With trust, you get to go for yes. And I, I, I highlight this because a traditional sales teaching approach in our industry is the go for no process. The idea that you're going to receive a lot of rejection on your way to success. You just got to toughen up. The, the first network marketing experience I had as a young man, they gave us t-shirts with pictures of rhinoc a rhinoceros on the front. And they said, you got to have the skin as thick as a rhinoceros to do this business, right? And, and I... That's terrible. Who wants that? Who likes to be rejected constantly? Have your relatives avoid you at family gatherings? Nobody likes that. But with building relationships authentically, we get to go for yes, because some people will be interested right away. But over time, we're building trust. Over time, we're building trust. We're not alienating people. We're investing in relationships and we're getting yeses. Okay, so how do we build trust? Let me just give you some tools to, to work on building trust. And these are kind of the lenses. I want you to look at your business on a daily basis and make sure that you're doing all these things constantly as you're building relationships. Okay, there's four essential ingredients to building trust. Number one is chemistry. Okay, chemistry. Number two is character. I'll, I'll go through them quickly and then I'll explain them for you. Number two is character. Number three is competence. Okay, competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. Okay. <clears throat> and you don't know how many times I did this training before I got them all to start with the letter C. But, you know, <laughs> it's attention to detail, right? All right. So number one, chemistry. Chemistry, and I'm not talking about mixing up chemicals in your garage. I'm talking about um, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. It's chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Very important principle is this, people prefer to do business with a friend, <clears throat> okay? Now just think about a family business, maybe a local restaurant that you love where you're treated like family. Isn't it amazing? Don't you love going there and, ex and, and experiencing that? And that's the way people are. People prefer to do business with a friend. So you need to connect with people. The first job is to find out what you have in common with people. Ask questions. It's amazing how we have things in common with everybody, right? And I know, you know, in the U.S. right now, we're, we're in a very divided political landscape and everybody's focused on what's different, what we don't have in common, where we disagree. As business owners, our job is to do the opposite. It's to connect with people, build bridges between people and find out what we have in common with them. Make sense? Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate that you care and that you are relatable. Okay, character is when you demonstrate that you care and that you're relatable. Relatable is a repeating term. You guys see that? It's important that people can see themselves in you if you want them to join you. But I want to talk about this definition of character because we often think of character as something we possess. Like I'm a person of good character. How many of you would say that you're a person of good character? But I want you guys to understand character is not something you have. It's something you do. This is an action word. Character is something you do. You have to demonstrate character daily. 
And this is how do you do it? You show how you care for others. This comes up in how you treat prospects and customers, how you take care of them, how you post, what are you posting on social media? Is it demonstrating care for, the, for your audience, right? Or is it just self-gratifying? How do you, and I, these, some of these are my personal wishes to change the world, but you know, how do you drive your car in traffic? Are you showing care for others? <laughs> right? Just all these things. You need 24 seven, you need to be showing how your care for others and being intentional about it. Be intentional about it. I once did, uh, you know, it, once we did one of my, my partners and I, we threw this huge seminar for 4,000 people in Disney World Orlando years ago. And um, working with Disney World was an incredible, ex how, how many of you have ever been to a Disney theme park? Working with them was incredible. First off, they they get they make they charge they make a lot of money, don't they? I mean, it was very everything costs money, but they they have two things that I love. You can have anything you want if you're willing to pay for it. They never say no to their customers. But the other thing is they have this concept that their employees are not employees, but rather cast members, and they're putting on a performance for their guests at all times. And so the cast members assume they're always being, they always have an audience and they train them this way. Whether you're in the restroom, whatever you're doing, you're always, somebody's always watching, you're always on stage. And this is what your business is like. It's your character, 24 seven, how you demonstrate your character. This is how people learn to trust you and wanna do business with you. And as we get to in a minute, we'll wanna introduce you to the, your friends. So I want you guys to really be conscious of how am I caring for people? How am I caring for people? How am I showing it? Like, don't just have care in your heart. Get out there and do action. Make sense? Number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay, competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. In other words, why should I do business with you? I mean, do, do you even, can you explain to me how this works? How is a, boom, a boomerang going to help me? Can you, do you have any clue? Like this is important. You need to be a competent business person. If you're new, your job is to learn, 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 learn. Get all those resources, absorb them, become a sponge, right? If you have, if you are somebody who perhaps, you know, your family and friends have seen you with your pants on backwards in the past, you need to be learning in public. They need to see you growing in confidence. You need to be sharing with people, sharing on your social media platforms. Oh, I just learned this. Did you know this? And start showing them that you're being educated now. Does this make sense? Because they have to come to grips with, wow, this person has grown into an incredible business person now. I can take them seriously. Does this make sense? So competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do. And the second piece is, you know, if I want to, why would I join your team? Do I believe you could mentor me to be successful? So I need to know that you're competent there as well. You need to be demonstrating this constantly. Make sense, guys? Now, here's, here's the good news. If you're new and you don't have these levels of competence yet, a lot of people will tell you, I ah, just fake it. It's all good. There's, a, there's a, a, a phrase popularized by one of my mentors, um, Zig Ziglar. Fake it till you make it. Have you guys heard fake it till you make it? This is not the case to do that. Faking is not good, right? What we want to do instead, if you don't have that competence, is you want to explain and, and share how amazing your team is, how amazing your upline is. You want to use them, tell their stories, tell, tell their successes. So people know you're associated with a team of competence. Incidentally, Zig Ziglar's fake it till you make it referred to a positive attitude not pretending to be more successful than you are. Just so you guys know. Fake it till you make it is about waking up and not feeling like doing your business activities and just pretending you're enthusiastic until you feel it. That's different, right? And that's, that I can get behind. So chemistry, character, competence. There's a principle behind this before we jump to number four. Um, and that's this. When someone's going to do business with you, they only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Okay, this is huge. Because honestly, these are the most important things. They may never say these out loud, but they feel them in their heart. And when somebody feels good about these three questions, you've now got an advocate, which is the goal. Because I want you guys to understand something about advocates. Advocates are excited to tell other people about your business. They may never do business with you. They may never join your team. But, when they, but they are excited about what you're doing and how it can help others and they'll connect people still. Does this make sense? 
Number four is consistency. Yes, you have to actually do work for this to work. You got to do some things consistently. This is the hard part, right? Being consistent. We struggle with this. We struggle with this. But I want you guys to understand this principle. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. I can't even tell you how many people just kind of ignored my messages and my connects for the first year of my business because they were waiting to see if I really meant what I was saying. Does this make sense? And then suddenly I'm getting responses like, uh, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to sign up. It's like, wow, you never responded to any of my messages. I just wanted to make sure that you were the real deal. Now I see you are. People respect consistency. This is how we build trust, right? The other piece of this is they desire it for themselves. People wanna be around consistent people. They're inspired by them. Wow, you're such an inspiration to me. You know, I can't tell how many people said, I'm so inspired by you that you left your, you left your career, your salary, your benefits, and you've been with your family. I've been with my family now seven years. Seven years, I have not had a J-O-B. Isn't that amazing? I don't know how I would do it now. I always say, well, if worse came to worse, I could get a job, you know, if something bad were to happen. But it's amazing. People are inspired by it. Why? Because we're doing something they want for themselves. This is what you guys are doing. You need to make sure that you're in public doing things consistently. They see you working on this. Does this make sense? They, they, their consistency builds trust and it draws people to your team. And the best part is it keeps people on the team. People want to stay around inspired people. How many of you are excited just about the community you're now part of? Right? People want to be around inspired people. So the consistency is the key for earning trust, for attracting people, and for keeping people. So here's the real question. And I imagine you guys are pretty consistent sharing, being on social media, using, you know, promoting all that, right? But are you as consistent with your relationships? This is the important question. And this is the action that we're going to be talking about today that actually matters for building your business, being consistent with relationships. Because I want you guys to understand that relationship building is a contact sport. Any contact sport fans around here? But not, not where we're actually hitting and hurting people, but you have to be in regular contact with people if you wanna have a relationship with them. You have to have, be in regular contact. Now, if you hired me as a consultant for your business, I would tell you the key to building a business is staying in regular contact with all of the people you know. But I understand your time is scarce, which is why we built Teamsy, right? Which makes it so easy and inefficient. We'll, t we'll, we'll look at it in a second. But here's the principle. This is the big principle of the day. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. You guys have that one? Just really quick. And before we jump into Teamsy, I just wanna see your faces for a second. If you guys are there and your camera's off, yeah, pop them on for a second so I can see your faces. Just really quick, just kind of a little survey with the group. How many of you have ever received a card or a letter from somebody that you love? And when you read that handwritten message in there, it was just like, oh my gosh, touched your heart. Have you all, has everyone, hopefully everyone, right? If not, put your address in the chat and we're gonna send you one because everyone should have at least one of those. So now think about that card or letter, you know, hope, probably one popped into your head when I asked you the question. Do you still have it? Have you saved it somewhere? How many of you have a secret stash of cards and letters that you've kept somewhere, right? We all do this, isn't this amazing? We all do this across the continents. Humans are the same. We value this so much. In fact, we value it so much that often when a loved one passes on, we keep their cards and letters, don't we? Like it has tremendous value. Now think about this for a second. I don't know, can you all see this? This is a happy birthday postcard. I received this from my insurance salesperson. The one person I don't wanna hear from is my life insurance salesperson, right? Hopefully no one in my family will ever have to talk to that person. But he sent me this birthday card, which is a nice gesture, isn't it? Do you ever receive these from businesses that maybe you do business with, you get like a little postcard in the mail? Yeah, so it's nice. Now here's the question, will this be kept? in the secret place and treasured by me. Beverly's like, no way. 
this is typically thrown into the recycling bin right away. It's kind of like you see it, it's nice, it's gone, right? There's no way my son Cruz will be using this to bookmark his, the family Bible when I'm gone, right? Eric was so well revered that he got a bulk mailing from his insurance salesperson. Now let's talk about why this has no value to us. Let's go back to our principle. One, is this required no investment of time. This took no, this is an automated system. He didn't do anything with this. He just paid for it, right? This required no time, so we don't value it. The second piece is this is not personal. It's not a personal connection. It's an impersonal connection. It's a bulk mail out. So the reason why it doesn't do anything to help our relationship and why I don't keep it and value it, it required no investment of time and it's not a personal connection. These are the filters you need to look at every time you interact with another person in your business. Is it personal and am I investing time? Now, you don't need to invest. I don't need you to sit down and write 10 letters a day to people telling them how much you care for them. Though whenever you can come up with a reason to send somebody a note card, handwritten, just understand they will keep it forever in most cases if you put your heart into it, right? But even with sending somebody a, a, a text message, a Facebook message, right? A DM of some sort, personalized, required a few seconds of time, which is what we built Teams to help you guys to do. It's enough to make people's day and it builds the relationship. Does this make sense? So in the beginning, I talked about automated marketing. It sounds sexy, doesn't it? Fire and forget. Have you guys heard those terms? Or are these just in the US that we, they use these terms to sell to us? It's fire and forget. You set it up, you never have to touch it. It just builds your business for you. In our industry, there's tons of people selling this stuff. This is what it feels like on the receiving end. Oh, that was nice. Or maybe not. Maybe it was annoying. Does this make sense? It's about connection, investing time. Now, here's the good news about this. Where's my keynote? Here we go. The good news about this is all this sounds great, right? I can tell some of you are really into it. Jules, I've got Jules. She's on the hook. She's like, I like what Eric's saying. She's nodding at me. She's giving me lots of positive feedback, but this is all good. It feels good, Eric, but you got to have a system. You can't just have principles. You have to have a system to follow. You need a way to stay in touch with all your contacts. You need to know when to contact people, when not to, so that you're not annoying, but so you stay in touch at the right amount. Does this make sense? You need to know what you're going to say. I heard a couple of you guys talking about, what are you saying in your scripts? What are you saying in your scripts? How do you start a conversation with somebody that's authentic without turning them off? Do you know how to do that? You need to know that nobody is going to fall through the cracks because your system is disorganized. Does this make sense? So let's talk about Teamsy because that's obviously we're leading us right in there. First off, how many of you have already, are already using Teams or at least checking it out at this stage? Okay, most of you, okay, great. So let's go in here real quick. Um, for, for those of you who aren't or anyone getting this on replay, you can get a free trial of Teamsy at teamsy.com. Okay, we give you 30 days free. We don't ask for credit card or anything. You can go for 30 days free, teamsy.com, okay? And when you get there, it asks you to select your business. You're gonna see the dropdown of all the versions we have. Make sure you get the eBoomerang version so you get the right one, okay? Great. And so what we're looking at here is as soon as you get your free trial and log in, it'll take you to this screen. This is the setup wizard of Teamsy. It's designed to make setting up Teamsy super easy, okay? I am not a tech wizard. How many of you guys are really good at tech? It's not me. So I needed something easy to use that even I could do. And if I can do it, you can do it. So this is this will take kind of lead you through this little video from me. We'll skip that. The first thing I want you to look at here is how to set your income goal. So we, what Teamsy will do is you tell us how much you'd like to earn and Teamsy will tell you what kind of activity you need to do. Now, I know this is set at US dollars, but just put in, the, just, just put in whatever the quantity is you want for your currency. Okay, it will work the same. Okay, it will work the same. So my goal was to make 150,000. So you can see what Teamsy does is it tells me every day, five days a week, what I need to do to get to that level is I need to connect with nine prospects, six of my current or past customers and four of my TSAs, okay? Now, if your goal is bigger, it'll ask you to do more. If your goal's more modest, it'll ask you to do less. But you'll always know exactly what to do and the best part, you'll know when you're done for the day which is really cool because sometimes you don't feel progress right away. You just need to know you're done, right? It's like exercise. 
How many of you guys, you know, you do a workout and you're like, I didn't lose a pound, but you're doing the right things. Make sense? So look, I'm going to put this back to 150. So at 150, I need to connect with 19 people a day. Now I'll show you guys, I can, I could do that in 15 minutes in TMZ because I know how to use it. It may take you a little longer than that, but you'll be able to do it easily in under an hour. Okay. So once you click on continue, now Teams in the background has set up my account for my goal. And I'll show you guys how that works in a second. The next step here is to get all your contacts into Teamsy. And these little links here are little videos and instructions on how to do it. What's cool is, so you wanna get your team in first then get your customers imported, right? <clears throat> your, and then you wanna get like, you know, you can get all your Facebook friends imported, you can get Instagram followers imported. You wanna get all your contacts in one place so you can be organized. No more hunting down sticky notes, pads of paper that you can't find when you need them, right? Or digging through your phone, trying to figure out where people's contact is. You get it all in Teams, it's in one place. It's cloud-based, which means it's always in your smartphone. It's in your hands always, you can get to it. But even more importantly than getting it in one place organized, <clears throat> Teams actually will feed that list to you on a daily basis and tell you who to connect with. So you don't have to think about who do I connect with? You'll always know, Teams will just tell you. It's really cool, I'll show you in a second. Okay, so here's our Teamsy dashboard. A couple things I wanna show you. First off, right here, I wanna highlight this bar right at the top where it says today's activities. Okay, these are my goals for today based on the income goal I set for the year. So again, my goal is to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four TSAs. You can see I've got all zeros because I haven't done any work yet. That'll change in a minute when we do our power hour together. I've also got a goal to share three times. So let me just explain the difference between a connect and a share. A connect is when I reach out to make someone's day. Okay, write that down, make someone's day. I call it the make someone's day mindset. It's not to reach out to pitch, it's not to reach out to sell, it's just to make somebody's day. Okay, first of all, doing that is really fun. You're gonna love doing that. It's gonna feel amazing but it also gives them an opportunity to respond to you so you can have a conversation with them. Does that make sense? Let me just be clear about something. And maybe you've, you've found this, maybe it was true for you. Most rational people will not jump on your business opportunity because you mentioned it to them one time. They're skeptical and guarded and they should be, right? This is why just, throwing a pitch out to someone we haven't talked to in 10 years often turns people off. So we wanna just have, we wanna create conversations, constantly creating conversations. That's your job. That's what Team D is gonna help you do. You're gonna to create tons of conversations. So we're gonna create conversations with our prospects, with our customers, and we're gonna stay in touch and build relationships with our team too, because that's important. The turnover rate is 50% a year industry-wide. How many of you are excited about every one out of every two people you recruit will quit? Not exciting. We need to build relationships. That's what keeps people going is the relationship. Okay. So shares is when we actually share the business opportunity with somebody or we send them the link so that they can become a customer. Like those are shares. Those don't, those, my goal is, only, is to do that three times a day. So I'm going to talk to 19 people, but I'm only going to share three times because I'm going to do that when it's appropriate, when I've uncovered some interest. We'll talk about that in a second. And then my last goal for the day is to add new people to Team Z. I added Beverly today. So you can see I've got one done. Through two to go. Always want to be adding new people to your Teamsy account, keeping the fresh. Think of your business as a beautiful lake. And you're cultivating this environment. You need fresh water. You need fresh water coming in all the time or it becomes stagnant. Does that make sense? I've had people go, Eric, I already have 10,000 contacts. Do I need to add people? Yes, you always need to be meeting new people, fresh people. It's okay. It's important. Okay, so those are my goals for today. Now, here's the thing that I love about this. If you have a big goal, my goal was pretty big. It was $150,000 a year. That was the salary I wanted to replace and then grow from there. You can do that. So now I know exactly what to do to get there. Goal's big, but my focus is small. What do I need to do today? I need to connect with these 19 people. Now, here's the best part I'm gonna show you in a second. Teamsy tells me which ones to connect to and it helps me with what to say. So when we go in here to do our power hour, here's the power hour module. This makes it so easy so I don't have to think or plan. I've got my three lists, my prospects, my customers, my TSAs. Teamsy tells me exactly who's up next, okay? And then the fourth list is my follow-ups list. 
I'll show you that in a second. On the right hand side is where I log the message as I, as I send it so that it's tracked in Teamsy. Once I track it in Teamsy, Teamsy automatically knows when the next time I should connect with this person is and they'll bring them back on my list for me. Pretty cool, right? So let's just go ahead and do this really quick. I'll show you how it works. Now, keep in mind, Teamsy has all your contacts in it, all their contact information, the name of their dog, when they were married, like all that stuff saved in there for you. You can look it up at any time. The Power Hour module keeps you focused though on just who to connect with now. It only gives you five names at a time so you can't get too overwhelmed. It's just, here's who to connect with. So we're gonna work our Power Hour from left to right, start with prospects. The first one on my list is Beverly. I'm going to send her a message. Now, however you message people is fine. I like to use Facebook Messenger a lot because the response rate on Facebook Messenger is the highest. So that's my favorite way to connect with people. Um, but however you connect with people, whatever contact info you have, maybe it's on Instagram, maybe it's text message, maybe it's, you know, however you can log anything in Teamsy. So I'm gonna send Beverly a message. This is where I used to get stuck. How do I do this? What do I say to her? How do I make her day without coming across salesy or cheesy? Does anyone struggle with this? So we put the scripts in Teamsy to help you. These are the scripts that over 20 years we have refined down to work. They just work incredibly. And of course you can edit them a touch. I know, you know, I'm very, some of my scripts I've been told are very American and uh, that's me. So sorry, <laughs> that's all good. Um, for those Australians watching this, um, I've never had Australians complain about my scripts. I think we're probably similar in a lot of ways in how we talk, right? Just a different accent. But here's the idea. Look, I'm going to go and get a script. I'm going to send her a Facebook message. And I'm just going to look for one that I can send her. I'll just take the first one off the list. Here's how it reads. It says, hi, Jane. Just stopping by to say hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. Okay, so you copy your script. I'm clicking copied script. And then just paste it in there so you can do your edits. Right? Obviously, we want to change the name to the correct name. Okay. If you don't say awesome, say great. Don't overthink this, you guys. Don't overthink this. Emojis. I love emojis. Anybody addicted to putting the emojis in messages? Yes. I think it's great. Man, I remember all those years sending corporate emails, wondering why people were mad or, or being pissy. And now you can put a smiley face. I'm not mad. <laughs> right? This is a happy message. It just makes it less threatening. You don't want it to be threatening. You don't want it to be uh, them feel like, again, you're trying to sell them. So here's a simple message. I've got it set up for her. I'll send it, that to her by copying that and actually going and sending it. So look her up. And is this you on top? I'm a Beverly with an L-E-Y at the end. That's why I've misspelled my name. Oh, that's why you're not coming up. I'm like, that doesn't yeah. look like you. Oh. <laughs> there you are. So there she is. Okay. You can also save that Facebook link on her profile and then just click it if you want. I, I never bothered spending the time saving the links because I can search it so quickly. So look, there it is. I pasted it in, send. Now I've sent that message to Beverly. She's received it. Just a little message to make her smile. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to log that in Teamsy as whatever activity it was. That was a Facebook message and hit the big blue button that says log connect. Now it's done. Next person on my list is Jay. And I'll just paste that same message in. There's no reason to overthink. Change the name. I've already got it the way I wanted it. And I'll just go send that to Jay. And so by doing this, I can jam down this list very quickly and get these first round of messages out. In fact, your power hour is basically just sending off messages, okay? Just sending off messages. So there's the next one, send, that's been sent to her, and we'll log that activity. Doom, bump, doom. <laughs> I'm trying to say boom and done together. So I said doom, that's probably not good. All right, so look, up here you can see I've got two done. See this blue circle's filling. As I continue to make my connects, that circle will completely fill in. That's my visual cue that I'm done with prospecting, right? So my goal is nine. When I send, nine, send that message to nine people, I'm done. And I go to my next list, which is customers, okay? Now, again, on customers, you just want to make their day the same way. We've got different scripts, though. Watch, I'm going to get some scripts. So now I'm going to message my customers the same way. So we've got some great scripts, something like... Um, 
you know, how are you enjoying? Hi, John, how are you enjoying your travel website? Please send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. So simple, so simple. This is my favorite one. Hi, hey, Jane. Um, hey, Eric, can I just yeah. add that? We, uh, we don't have to actually um, talk to any of our customers. When they're in the PRIB, the automation does it all. So for us, customers are not somebody we talk to or have to talk to. So that's just a, um, yeah, I didn't know whether you knew that, but you know, we really are focusing on people from the business side and also targeting people who uh, can, will either be a customer or they'll be a, you know, an ambassador. So we don't, we're told like leave your customers alone, the automation and the AI technology will do it all. That's cool. That's exactly like the postcard that I just told you about. And you're leaving gold on the table, Beverly. I will absolutely tell you guys that customers are the gold mine in this business. They are the gold mine in this business. They are most likely to join your team and they're most likely to tell other people about what you're doing. And so the personal relationship is what matters. So I would tell you the automation's great. That's your safety net, but you definitely want to be in touch with them and have a relationship with them. I'm just telling you right now, you guys, that is the key to this business. And so you, you will grow much faster if you do that. You will grow much faster if you do that. So here's an example. Look, I'm just going to copy this. And we're going to send this script to her. This is actually a team. This is actually a real Teamsy customer who's an eBoomerang person. So we're going to actually send it to her and see. It's so funny is I, I send people these scripts and they don't even realize it. They're just like, oh my gosh, Eric, how are you? So look, same thing, just checking to see if there's anything I can do to make your day, great. So your automation takes care of all the business stuff, stay in touch with them as a person, okay? Is she on your team? Do you guys know Allie? You do know Allie? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So She's, look, um, I enrolled with her. Great, so we send her a message. So you see how easy it is. Okay, so this is why I want you guys to talk about this. I'm glad you brought that up, Beverly, because it's important. This is really important. Obviously, it's something I'm really passionate about, teaching you guys. There's three Eric, reasons. Hello, somebody talk. There's... Don't worry. Oh, no worries. There's three reasons why staying in touch with customers is so important. Personal touch, personal touch. The first one is, it is just a good business right? It's integrous business to have a relationship with your customers. But number two is when people, when you're in regular contact with customers, they purchase more and retain longer. This is statistically known across any business. They purchase more and retain longer. Okay. And this is important because it impacts the volume of the whole organization, right? And so it's just that regular contact. It's just, it keeps them top, keeps it top of mind. They use the, they use it more and they retain longer. The, the, the third thing, and this is the most important thing that I want you guys to understand is the best place to find new customers, to find new team members is from your current customers. That is the best place. These people trust you 10 times more than people who you haven't talked to yet because they've already spent money. They've already invested, okay? But if you think about somebody that you work with that you love working with them, okay? They most likely are telling people about what you're doing. This is what human beings do is we share. But the vast majority of people who are being told about it won't ever act on it. And you're not getting into, especially if you're not talking to them personally, you're not gonna get introduced to those people they're talking to. But here's what's really interesting. 84% of people say they make purchasing decisions based on the recommendations of a friend, not based on some amazing marketing platform, not based on advertising, but on a friend's recommendation. So here's what I wanna to propose to you guys. Your customers are talking to friends about what they're doing. If you're not in touch with them, you'll never get introduced to those people. And those people won't introduce you to their friends most of the time, unless you ask them to. So this is what I want you to do with Teams when you're staying in touch with somebody. I'm in contact with you. Is there anything I can do to make your day? Oh my gosh, I'm here for you. How's everything going? How was your holiday? Just connecting and staying in touch with people. Every once in a while, it gives you the opportunity to say, you know, Beverly, I know you've been really enjoying everything and you've been using the platform, which is great. You've probably told friends and family about the platform. Is there anybody that, before I get too busy this month, is there anybody that you know that needs more information? Because I want to make sure that your people get served first. You're my favorite customer. And she said, well, yeah, actually, I was talking to Rob about it the other day. Perfect. Would you mind, Beverly, would you mind introducing me to Rob so I can get the info to him? See, when you ask for her to introduce you, now you get to proactively connect with him. 
okay? And, and they just do it for a group text, a group message on Facebook. This is my friend, Eric, the one I was talking about the other day. I just wanted to connect you guys. He's got, you know, in case you wanted some more information on what he's doing, great, perfect. Hey, Rob, great to meet you. Does this make sense? This is how you grow your business the fastest, is by getting introduced. And what happens when somebody introduces you to a friend is that friend already trusts you. You're not starting at ground zero. They already trust you. Why? Because their friend trusts you. 84% of people make purchases based on that. Does it make sense? So this is why it's so important, you guys, that you are in regular contact with your customers. It's great that you've got a system that automates that, that, that businessy stuff. So get the relationship going. Make sense? Okay. Back to this. Once you've connected with your customers, you're going to connect with your team. The same reason you want to keep a relationship, just send them a quick message. Hey, I'm proud of you. I saw that you signed somebody up. Good for you. You know, I haven't heard from you in a while. How's everything going? Let people know you care about them. The number one thing, and if you guys study social science, look, I could give you 10 books you could read. I'll summarize them for you. Of all the studies they've done on worker productivity, on what motivates people to work harder, they've never been able to correlate income to how hard somebody works or how productive they are. Making more money doesn't do it for people. There's two things they've been able to correlate that make an impact. One is status, perceived status, which is why our companies reward us and give us these titles and right. But the most important thing, relationship, relationship, feeling connected to the people on the team, to the leader of the team, to the mission, of the team. This is what keeps people in. Look, if you want to recruit 10 people and have nine people at the end of the year, you got to focus on those relationships. Okay. The connection to the team, the connection to you will be the motivation <coughs> that helps them to be, to do what you're teaching them and be successful. Does that make sense? So it's so important. That's why we named this Teamsy, by the way, not salesy or cheesy or something. We named it Teamsy because the focus is on building a team. That's how you build a business so you can have the life you want. So power hour, real simple. It's just outgoing messages, prospects, then to your customers, then to your TSAs, whoever's up next in Teams, you just send them a little message, right? As your team is using Teams, you can just tell them, you're on my Teams today. How's everything going? Like, it'll be like a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge between you that and they'll know they're important enough that you've put them in the system to maintain that relationship with them. Does that make sense? So the first half of the power hour, just sending outgoing messages. Now, a couple of quick tips. Some people will respond right away. Don't run off and have the conversation yet. It'll get you sidetracked, right? Get all the outgoing messages done so that you get it finished. Now, the second half of the uh, power hour is your follow-ups list. Okay, your follow-ups list. So you can see there's no follow-up schedule because the follow-ups is not an automatic thing. You have to actually put people on your follow-ups list. So how does that work? So just to kind of give you an idea, as I'm prospecting and talking to people, when I have an opportunity to share with somebody, then I put them on a follow-ups list because I'm no longer just connecting to build relationship. Now I've got my professional hat on and I need to represent them professionally. They've said, yes, I'm interested in learning more. I've now shared a business opportunity with them and, or a product solution for them. And now I'm going to follow up like a pro. Okay. So let me just give you an example. I sent Beverly that message. Hope you're having a great day. She responds, gee whiz. Thanks Eric for checking in. I am having a great day or it's better now that you checked in, great. And right there, that's it, right? That's the end of the conversation in most cases. So now it's your job to try to, you know, ask some questions and keep it going. You know, how are you guys doing? You know, um, how have you been through the pandemic? I don't know, I just ask a question. Send me an update, tell me what your family's been up to. So now she's like, okay, well, we've been doing this and this is what, you know, so she's now engaging a little bit. So just asking questions, trying to get engaged and have a regular conversation, right? If you can get somebody to send you the update on their life since you've last connected with them, that's great because now it's really easy for you to give them an update on your life, isn't it? Which is my favorite way to talk about the business. People are always like, Eric, how do I talk about the business? I can't even tell you how many people, uh, you know, buy my training programs, how to talk about the business. And I can, you can, you're welcome to do that too. They're awesome. But I mean, I'm going to give you the basic right now is you tell them what you're doing and why you're passionate about it. Right. If I was to give you my update on what's going on in my life, I would tell you, you know, we've been uh, three and a half months confined to our home for the most part where we live, where we still are in Southern California and our kids school has been canceled for the year. So school they're we're homeschooling 
now, along with half the country. We got a new puppy. Oh, and did I tell you about my new business that I'm doing from home? It's awesome. Yeah, I started a new business. It's so cool. I love it. I get, not only does it let me do this, this, and this, but it lets me help other people and empower them. And, and during this pandemic, it's brought income to the family while we haven't been able to work. So cool. Do you guys see how natural it is? To just, it's just part of your update. And your goal as you're connecting with people is they need to know what you do and why you're passionate about it. Not, are you ready to join my team? If I were to throw you this amazing opportunity, would you take a look? Like everybody knows that stuff. They see it coming from a mile away, you guys. Does it work? Yeah, is the return percentage wise low? Yes. So just be honest, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm passionate about it. Oh, and by the way, let me know if you'd like to learn more. I'd be happy to send you info. Okay, great. Because like I said, most people, the first time you introduce it, aren't gonna go, yes. I'm... But every once in a while, somebody says, yeah, I'm looking for an opportunity. Great. Well, yeah, this sounds really interesting. I would like to learn more. Let's, so if she says, yes, I, you know, I would like to learn more. Perfect. Now what, I, what would I do with Beverly? We've had this nice conversation. Now and say, hey, let's get on a call or let's get on a Zoom as soon as we can. Um, you know, five or 10 minutes, no big deal. Just so we can talk a little bit more and I'll give you some more info. And I, I, what I really want to know is like, you know, what you need, like, what are your goals? I'd like to know what your goals are so that I can see if there's anything I can, if it's anything I can help you achieve. Great. She says, great. Let's get on a Zoom, Eric. Perfect. We'll do it tomorrow at whatever time. Perfect. Now I've got her booked on the Zoom. We jump on the Zoom call. We have a great conversation about the business, right? I ask her a lot of questions. I present the business opportunity to her. How do I log this in Teamsy? So first off, she's not on my power, on my power hour anymore. So I have to search her name in the lookup bar. Now I spelled it wrong again, didn't I? Oh, I put you in wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit her name real quick. Now that I know that she's the special spelling. There we go. That's better. See how easy it is to change data in Teamsy? Love it. Okay, so once I'm on her record, I can click on the connect and that opens the connect box just as it is on the dashboard. So I'm gonna now log this conversation we had. It was a video chat, great. I'm gonna put in all my notes from our Zoom call. Okay, great. And then see right here on the bottom left where it says share. I wanna highlight that for you. I'm gonna click on this because this wasn't the default connect. This was actually a share of the business opportunity, okay? or maybe it was a share of the products, whatever. I'm gonna use business opportunity. So there's the business opportunity share. Now what happened was it immediately toggled on the follow-up list. It defaulted it to two days, but you can set it to any day you want. Have you guys had somebody to this point where they're so interested and they've had the whole spiel and they're like, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do it. And then you notice that they just don't sign up. Has this ever happened to anyone? <laughs> Surprise, it happens all the time, which is why we have to follow up. You have to assume no matter how enthusiastic they are, the chances are good. It's actually 80%. 80% of them won't sign up right away. Okay? This is just normal human. This is human psychology. So what we do is we put them on the follow-up list. So when I'm talking to Beverly, I say, great. She's like, I'm going to do it. Great. I said, great. I'm going to send you right now an email with everything you need, instructions, links, everything you need. And she says, perfect. And then what do I say? I'll follow up tomorrow to see if you have any questions. Why am I going to follow up tomorrow? Because I know she's 80% unlikely to actually do it. So I put it on my follow-ups list and I log it. Now that follow-up is set. So let me go back to the dashboard and just show you real quick. Follow-ups, there it is, due tomorrow. Okay? Tomorrow when I do my power hour, I do the same thing I just showed you. Connect with whoever's up next on prospects, customers, TSAs. And then I go to my follow-ups list and I see who's due and I send them a follow-up message. You do this, the follow-up message the exact same way as doing a connect. I'm gonna come in here to do my follow-up, go to scripts. Now, this time though, when I grab a message, a script, I'm gonna make sure it's labeled follow-up because I put 10 follow-up scripts in here for you guys, numbered in order. Honestly, you don't ever have to think. You just send them follow-up one, then two, then three. Make sense? So follow-up number one reads like this. Hi, Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Okay, so powerful. It took me years to get that down to being that short and potent. Okay, just checking in like I promised I would, what questions do you have for me? Now, I'm gonna send her this message again, the exact same way. I did it again. Okay, great. So now I'm sending the follow-up, send. Okay, that's sent. 
And now log this and set a new follow-up. So maybe now I'll follow up two days later. Great. You can leave yourself a note if you want about the follow-up and then log it. So now I followed up with her. So the power hour is prospects, customers, TSAs, and then any follow-ups that are due. Now, just real quick on follow-ups and then we'll do Q&A because I know I've been talking a long time. I, I told you I was going to squeeze as much as I could in. The follow-ups is the, is the key. This is where people mess it up. They mess up the business this way. They don't follow up enough. Now, just to give you the statistics, 80% of all sales happen between the 7th and 10th follow-up. 80% of all sales happen between the 7th and 10th follow-up. Most people follow up three or four times. So they're giving up 80% of their business. I look at it a different way. How many of you are in this business because you have a heart, you really want to help people? Like you're excited and passionate about helping people. These are, those are people you won't help, right? So we, if we want to help people, we need to understand that following up is the key. This is why I always say following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. And most people don't follow up because they're worried about being annoying, coming across as a nag. So let me just teach you quickly how to follow up without being annoying. But I want you guys to understand 20% of people will sign up right away. 80% will take much longer. Not only will it take much longer, but most of the time they won't even respond to your messages, maybe six or seven in. Have you guys noticed some people just like, there's nothing but crickets? Do you guys say that? Do you use that term? You don't use that term? It's something we say in the, in the US when nobody responds to you. It's like all you hear is crickets, like in the evening. There's nothing but crickets. You say you're being ghosted. Yeah, totally. But people don't actually ghost people for the most part. They don't ghost people. Most people won't respond to six or seven messages and I'll explain to you guys why. It's because your message comes in at the worst moment, right? The dog's throwing up on the baby. They're in the middle of, of preparing supper. They're driving their car. Th those are, that's when your messages come through. And most people won't open the messages when they cannot respond because they don't want to look like a jerk for, for sending the read response and then not responding. So they won't open them. And they'll, they'll be well-meaning. I'll, I'll do it later. And then later comes, they forget about it or for whatever reason they don't, or they now too much time's passed. So they feel like it's better just pretend I didn't see it, right? This is what's happening. So let me explain to you guys how we, how we deal with this with our follow-up system. Send them a follow-up. First off, make sure that you never ask them to do anything in the follow-up. This is how you avoid being annoying. Don't ask them to do anything. Don't say, you need to call me. Please respond. Are you coming to my event on Friday or not? Right? Like, don't ask those kinds of questions. Don't ask them to respond, to call you or anything. Okay? Because that can be annoying. Then the second principle is when you send a follow up message, make sure they can read the entire message without opening it, just in the notification. Okay? So notice the keyword is read. Don't send, when you're following up, don't send voice messages, don't send videos send something written they can quickly read. You want them to be able to, in a glance, read your whole message because what will happen is they will always glance at it, always, no matter what. I don't care what they're doing. They will look at their phone and glance at your message. And that's all that you want them to do is see it, know you're there, and for them to continue receiving your care. Does this make sense? And just understand they're not going to respond. 20%, if they, don't, if they don't answer within the first three Follow-ups, they probably won't answer till eight or nine in. Then what will happen is you'll get a message that says, I'm so sorry I haven't responded to your messages. Thank you for staying in touch. And they'll start unpacking all the reasons that they justified in their mind for not responding. You see, first the dog ate the cat. Then, you know, the pandemic thing hit. And then, like, we didn't have any masks, so I couldn't get any groceries. And so, right, like, this stuff happens, right? You get these these... But it doesn't matter because once they've gotten that off their chest, they're, they're in a point of gratitude. Thank you for staying in touch. Great. Well, let's talk more about it. I know you're excited about the goals we set and I'm here to help. Are you ready now to move forward? Are you with me? This is how the business is done. You just create conversations. You build relationships. You have fun doing it. You find people who are interested. You tell them, what, tell them what's going on. You put them on your follow-ups list. Second half of your power hour, all the follow-ups are due. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. 
if you do this, this is how you get people averaging 21 customers and nine recruits every three months is it's just consistently, consistently creating opportunities. And every month people on that follow-ups list come through and convert. Does it make sense? Hmm. And some of those people are like, this is easy. This is great. Maybe I should be on your team. So those people, cause you're in touch with them now, Beverly, right? So now those people are going to be start converting to your team. So um, that's how Teamsy works. That's how people get great results because what it does is it takes the human heart piece of the business, which is the key, and it gives you a system to follow. None of us are really good at this naturally. We're either good at connecting or we're good at organizing. Very few people are good at both pieces, right? So if you're good at connect, if you're good at, you're really organized, now you've got a system you can enjoy and will help you get better at connecting with people. If you're really great at connecting with people, but you're disorganized, now we've got a way to do it. Make sense? All right, so we'll do some Q&A. Let me just give you guys a couple of, of action steps really quick. So, um, here we go, you saw that one. Action steps. The coach in me, gotta give you action steps. First off, go to teamsy.com, get your 30 day free trial started if you're not already doing it, okay? It's completely free for 30 days, that's a no brainer. And 30 days, the reason I give you a whole month, some people give you like seven days. I want you to actually make money before you invest in Teamsy. Does it make sense? So I want you to go in for 30 days, build some momentum. Then it's easy because after 30 days, Teamsy is $29.99 US a month. So it's less than one US dollar a day to have all this organization in your business. Okay. And we do only take US. So whatever you, you know, when you sign up, it'll just be it'll slightly fluctuate each month based on the exchange rate of your credit card, if that makes sense. But um, again, and if you're in your free trial already, set up your subscription. So when the 30 days is up, you don't miss a beat. You can keep going. Okay. Also, I highly recommend you get a 30 day success partner to do the free trial with you. Okay, get a 30 day success part. Look around and say, hey, you wanna do this with me for 30 days? Here's why. I'll give you 30 days free access, great. You're gonna go in and play with it. Oh, the colors are pretty, this is nice. But if you have an accountability partner and you say, hey, let's get the most out of this next 30 days together. Share your daily goals with each other. And what I want you to do is when you've completed your power hour, take a screenshot and message it over to your partner. Do it every day and have them do the same. What will happen is you will get so much more done. Over th this could be the best month of your business ever. Okay, you may want to keep that partner forever. What happens is those days when you just didn't feel like doing anything. Anyone ever have those days? Yeah, we all have those days. Then your partner did it. They send you that picture. Oh, it's so annoying. So annoying. Because guess what? I mean, if you're like me, it's like, I got to go do it now. And you, you realize I could get this done in 20 minutes or so. Just send them back. Be done be like, yeah, I got mine done too. There you go. Okay. The accountability is huge. We work for other people. Human beings are meant to be in community with other people. We need the push and pull of a partner of accountability partners to be successful. Everyone does. So do that 30 day success partner. And my final action step is my five day challenge. I give you a five day challenge. I challenge you to use Teamsy five days in a row, five days in a row. Okay, over those five days, I want you to connect with 100 people. That means just send them a message. Send a message to 100 people over five days. That's 20 a day. You could do that without your arms and legs falling off. Why do I want you to do this? Because it's going to change the way you look at your business forever. So many people will respond. You may feel yourself a bit overwhelmed. How many of you before this call believed that in five days, you could blow your own phone up with people talking to you. Probably not, but I want you guys to understand you can do this. You can create this momentum all the time just by focusing on making people's day. Send a message to make 100 people's day. You'll get at least 50 people to respond to you. And you're gonna go, oh my gosh, I do have the ability to make an impact in people's lives. I do have the ability to create momentum in my business. You'll never believe otherwise again. And as leaders, when your team members say, I've already tapped my warm market. Oh, with this pandemic, nobody's responding. Whatever excuses they come up with, you're going to go, it's not true. Team Z five-day challenge. I challenge you because you can never believe those stories again because they're not true. Does it make sense? Okay. You guys got those action steps? Perfect. So if anyone has questions at this point, just go ahead and unmute and, and unmute your own microphone and feel free to ask me. Go ahead, Mary. Um 
All right. With, with, um, when you download from Facebook and you download all your contacts, meanwhile in Facebook, you're busy, like you'll be making new friends, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How do you add those ones that weren't in the initial download? Do you sync it or do you, you know, how can you keep track of those? Okay, the best practice is each day when you're done doing your power hour is adding people to your teams manually. Let me show you how to do it. And um, again, remember the goal is that you're adding people, three people a day to teams yeah. anyways. So the way you yeah. do it is see this button at the top, add contact. Yeah. You just click that. Okay. So you just and, do it manually as you go through. Yeah, this Facebook. is the best way. And let me just explain to you why too. Now, of course, if you fell way behind, I gotta, I'm having really trouble smelling today, aren't I? If you're falling way behind, you can do another bulk import of your Facebook friends. It will only add the new people the second time. Okay. okay. But the reason why it's great to create a contact this way is because now I can actually, let's say I want to put you on my follow-ups list for tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So remind myself to send you a message. I can do that. Yeah. I can also change your rank, your star, or I can log that first message right now so that you're in the teams you flow in the right place. Does that make sense? So, so it's it definitely good to just, as you meet people, add them. Now you've got this little motivation thing of trying to get the circle filled every day. Yeah. So that's you'll be looking for people to meet. It'll, it'll drive you to do it even more than you've done it. Yeah, that's cool. Cause I haven't been doing that. No, neither have I. <clears throat> um, how did you work out that that's what we need to do to get 150,000 and is that a year or is that in a lifetime or what is that in? That's in 12 months, 12 months from now. So what we did was, well, we, t we took, after 20 years of working with people in other industries, we had ratios that we found, connect, uh, connect volume ratios that we found delivered an average income. <clears throat> when I wanted to build this for network marketing, what we did was we started studying um, the, the connect ratios of leaders and people in this industry and how many people they were reaching out to and how, many, how much activity they were doing to get to it. And what we found was that the connect ratios were pretty similar, which means these are universal principles, right? These are universal principles. Um, what we had to adjust was the number based on the average commission rate, how much money you earn on a sale, right? Which that varies dramatically. If you're selling real estate, you make a lot more money per transaction, right? So that's why there's so many connections. I mean, I don't think 19 a day is very many, but if you times that by 250 days, that's a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? So Team Z is based on a five-day work week, so it's about 250 days a year. So 250 days times 19 is a lot of people that you're connecting with. That's how you can get to the, that kind of an income. Now, I guarantee you that people that aren't using Teamsy, very few people are hitting those kinds of numbers of connecting because mm. there's no like consistent drive. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so what we did was we, first we built, we built Teamsy originally for one network and then we expanded out of demand. People were saying, please build Teamsy for us. We expanded into a completely different product. We weren't sure would it be the same and it was the same. And then as we've gone, we've kind of tracked it and the ratios have been holding true. What we find is that you, um, you're you human being, so you probably, there's very few people that are really great at being consistent for 12 straight months. <laughs> you're up and down because you're a person, right? But you'll do way more with the system than you do on your own. Yeah. I happen to have the incredible pleasure of having met the first person that I know who's like 100% consistent all the time. Her name is Alicia. She lives here in Southern California. She's a mom to three grown kids. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's been in my boot camp for um, for twelve months now. She every it's a three month boot camp. She signs up again and again and again. And I see her numbers because she's on my team report. I can see what she's doing, and I don't think she's missed ever. Like she's so consistent. I cannot believe it. I was just telling my partners, we need to like um, do a video with her or something. Like find out how she does it. She's amazing, but it's rare. It's rare that people are consistent all the time, but if you are consistent most of the time, you'll do great. Does that make sense? We've got, um, we've got a three month um, 
game plan happening on the 7th of September, starting from 7th of September. We've got a big conference, 4th, 5th, 6th, and we've got the three months starting on the 7th. So we're getting ourselves organized and set up for that. Yeah. Three months is a perfect amount of time because if you do some, if you can do it consistently for three months, you've built a habit that you can maintain forever. Yeah. Right. They say the habit is, they say a habit can be built in 28 days. However, um, I think that's very true of bad habits. <laughs> I feel like positive habits take a little longer, uh, which is why I typically do 12 week boot camps because I think over 12 weeks, um, you're going to have some reason that you've fallen off the wagon for some, for whatever reason. And so that, so the group or the accountability can lift you back up and you keep going. And it's kind of like, you have to go through in order to really build a habit. You have to go through the process of failing at it and coming back to it and realizing you can recover from the failures because that's how good habit sustains itself. Right. So, um, so that's, that's why three months is great. So if you guys have a blitz coming up, this may be a perfect opportunity. You guys can get into teamsy and go for it. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Um, my other question, which is one from Debbie, she's got lots of email addresses. Can you email people from here? Yes, absolutely. You, you know, email is the most passive form of communication and it has the lowest response rate. Mm -hmm. So response rate of email, look, if you look, if you talk to any professional marketer, they say if you can get 10% response rate from email, that is amazingly good, right? Whereas you probably are closer to 90% response rate with a Facebook message. So just keep that in mind. So if you've got only email addresses, then that's what you send people. But the goal is like, how can we get more contact info from these people? Right? So a couple of things that I always did was um, I would in the footer of my email, I would put things like, Hey, um, why don't you connect with me on Facebook? Here's my link, you know? And I would also put, um, for a quick response to questions, text me at this number, right? Mm -hmm. So that was just kind of like the footer of my emails when I sent it to customers because I would get customers from the web that only gave me an email address, right? And so over time, now not everybody clicked on those, but over time, a percentage of them would become a Facebook friend. Well, now we're, now I'm like, oh my gosh, your dog is so cute. Now we're connecting on a human level. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important that we start, I'm a dog person. So as soon as I see your dog, that's the first thing we're going to talk about. Right. So, but um, you know, the, the same thing with the text, a lot of times, and, and we found this with Teamsy too, is that um, people, when people join Teamsy, my team sends you a text message. If you have a question, just respond to this text. People love that. It's so easy. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you do that, that's some way you can start getting that information. And then it's like, boom, once they send you a text with a question, now you've got permission to text them and they'll yeah. respond more. Make sense? The other thing yeah. that I often do is I will, I would um, take the email address and put it in the search bar of Facebook. A lot of people will, a lot of people have their Facebook account with the same email address and you mm -hmm. can find their Facebook by plugging that email into the search bar of Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so well, then I would, I would well, yeah, that, I mean, yeah. that'll happen for some of them. It'll work. And then you can quickly go, boom, you know, Hey, it's your, Hey, it's Eric, you know, you're, friendly, friendly sp neighborhood Spider-Man. You know, I'm just, I found you. I saw you on Facebook Thought I'd connect. So, you know, I'm on here all the time. I don't know if you are, this is a great way to stay in touch with me. So just ways that you can, you can bring the connection level deeper, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, can I ask a quick question? Of course. Um, I have a lot of my connections on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So is there any way of um, getting the LinkedIn people on to here. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, yeah. There's instructions in our help center on how to import your LinkedIn contacts okay. in bulk right. and get them all in at once. Um, yeah. And you can log, you know, when you're logging an activity with somebody, one of them is you can log yeah. that it was a LinkedIn message. Yeah. Okay. Great. Now the Thank question, uh, Beverly had asked me the question, can you send emails from Teamsy? And you can send Gmail email from Teamsy. You can actually send it from Teamsy and have it logged. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you use Gmail, that's really cool. Um, I like, you know, I didn't always use Gmail, but for my business, I had Gmail so that I could keep it separate. And, um, there's a, the scripts function in Teamsy is really cool. You know, you can upload your own scripts to Teamsy and I would have all of the emails that I would send people. I would have in Teamsy as scripts. Okay. So let me just give you an example. 
I, like I said, emailing somebody just to stay in touch is kind of passive. They don't always respond. But if I'm talking to you, we're texting back and forth and then we get on a Zoom call, I'm going to always follow that up with an email because email allows me to send links and attachments, videos, whatever, right? And so I say, great, this was a great conversation. Beverly, I'm going to send you an email right now that has all the information, the, the, you know, the recap of everything we talked about, the links to sign up, everything's on this email. I'm going to send it to you right now. That email I would have built as a script in Teamsy. Then I would go to her record, send his email, change the name to Beverly, send it. So I didn't have to rewrite that email more than once. And I had it for every single product solution in my business. I had a special email that I had built that I saved as a script and they were in there as scripts. So even while, even if I was, you know, face to face, remember when we used to get face to face with each other? <laughs> Seems like a distant memory, doesn't it? <laughs> I've done it before, standing with somebody with my phone, pulling Teamsy up and going, I'm gonna send you the email right now. And they're watching me pull it up. People are <laughs> amazed by it. Wow, you have that already saved in there? Yeah, it's my system. This is my system. It helps me stay, serve people like a professional. They're like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, I've just added you to Teamsy. I'm sending you the email right now. And they're like, that's incredible. So I think Teamsy is a great way to show off when you're meeting somebody. It's like, oh, well, hold on. Let me put you in my system. We'll stay in touch. And you pull it up. <laughs> you start putting their contact information in front of them. They're like, what is that? It's my contact system. It's really cool. This way I will never forget to stay in touch with you. Wow. Perfect. Uh, I've got a question, actually. Um, I've got, I've downloaded all my Facebook people and that's in there and I need to grade them. But I've got loads on LinkedIn. I've got probably about 5,000 LinkedIn contacts. Is would it identify the different um, social media platforms if I downloaded them within my contacts that's already there, which are Facebook? Would it differentiate it? So what, what you can do, well, first off, if, you, if it's the same person with the same name, then Teamsy won't import them a second time. Okay, so it won't duplicate them. However, LinkedIn, often people put titles and things that, after their name. So, so Teamsy will think it's a different name. Um, mm -hmm. So you may get some duplicates that way. So what, what you would do is um, when you do your, your LinkedIn, you may, Jules, you may not want to import that LinkedIn list yet. Mm. Okay, so that's my first good thing. But what I would say is you, would, you can tag it. So as you're doing the import, you can add the tag LinkedIn. So every single person there would be tagged LinkedIn. Um, we automatically tag your Facebook import as Facebook for you. So you would then see people might have both of those tags, meaning you're connected in both places. But if you've already got your Facebook friends in there, you may not want to add 5,000 more people right away. What yeah. you may want to do is, um, you know, start bringing those people in onesie twosie, you know, go th look yeah. through your LinkedIn contacts and just cherry pick the ones that you want in Teamsy right away. Um, because I think that if you have, you know, if you bring in more than four or 5,000 people into Teams, if you're not really committed to doing it five days a week, then you've, then you're not, it's not going to cycle, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. Because I've, I've made so much, so many contacts on LinkedIn, I have already connected with them. And um, so not always are they interested and they've expressed that. So yeah. I guess just cherry picking probably would be the best way of going forward. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I do. I basically, if people I've got a conversation happening on LinkedIn, I'll have them like Eric's shown you, and I'll put them as a four or a five or a three. Um, you know, like depending. I've actually changed all the num the days in that to for my for what I want to do in terms of connecting with people and following up, um, and it works really well because you can just add them in, and yeah, and, and go from there, Jules. So yeah, I've got a base of Facebook, and yeah. then I add in LinkedIn. Yeah. So you know, yeah. you've got. Um, I look at it like this. There's the, the people who trust you should get in there, right? The people who trust you should get in there. Now, here's the thing I want you to, to know about this. If there's somebody that you have a real relationship with and they've said, I'm not interested in that, Jules, don't take them out of your Teamsy account. Okay, stay in touch with them. Not because you're trying to pitch them, but just stay in touch with them. Let them know you care about them. Stay in there. And what will happen is, they will, over time, they'll become an advocate for you. There's going to be people who are not interested who will start introducing people to your business because they're like, I really like the way she does business. She's great. She's so professional. She's building, I'm, I'm really Im admiring what you're doing. Does this make sense? Yeah. And so let me just give you an example. So uh, first off, look at all the people that you know. So you've got 5,000 people on LinkedIn, all the people on Facebook, 
all those people fall into three categories if you're doing this right. They're either going to join your team, they're going to become a customer of yours, or they're going to become your advocate. Okay? They're going to become your advocate. Oh, yeah. You're looking for an opportunity? You need to talk to my friend Jules. Or you're planning this incredible, incredibly expensive around the world tour? You should talk to my friend Jules. She helps people solve this problem, right? So you become an ad they become advocates for you as you educate them. This is huge, okay? So let me just tell you a story. So as a, as a business coach, I specialized. I, I've coached every, every kind of business owner you can imagine, but I specialized in real estate, uh, real estate people. That was kind of my niche, right? And I worked with people that, to help them build huge real estate businesses. And... Um, when I started doing network marketing, I was a beach body coach. Have you all heard of beach body? So it's like fitness and health, right? Yeah. And so I lost, personally lost 60 pounds and, and then I was really into helping people get fit. And so I was, you know, connecting with people and letting them know, you know, I lost 60 pounds. I'm so passionate about helping people get fit, get healthy. You know, if you come across anybody who needs to get, to work on their health, to lose some weight, to build some vitality, could you connect them with me? Cause I want to help as many people as I can. So I'm, I'm talking to people like this, right? And I'm posting on what I'm learning on social media, you know, learning about hydration, learning about nutrition. Mm -hmm. And one of my contacts who I'd known for a long time, a, a very successful real estate broker, he's messaged me and he said, Eric, I need to unfriend you. Because, you know, now that you're not really talking about real estate, your posts really aren't relevant to me anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm a sensitive guy. So that kind of, I, my feelings were very hurt, especially because I've <laughs> done a lot to help this man in his business over the years. Right. But you know what, after I got mad and I went and vented to my wife and complained about what a big jerk this guy was and she agreed. <laughs> That's a good marriage, right? When you complain <laughs> and they agree. Um, I messaged him back and I said, you know what? I appreciate where you're coming from. Could you do me a favor though? If you come, if you know anybody who's struggling with their weight or with their health, or maybe they're on medications they're struggling to get off of. Could, would you connect them with me? Because I'm really passionate about helping as many people as I could, as I can. You know what he did? He introduced me to three people. He introduced me to three people. He became an advocate for me. And about three weeks later, he friend, sent me a new friend request. You, and, and I'll tell you why. Because his three friends were excited about what was happening for them. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. And he realized that there was value in being connected to me. So he became an advocate for me. I got over my, my anger and resentment quickly and just got into helping his friends. But that was kind of a big boy moment for me was going, okay, this isn't about me. And I understand why he responded that way. Cause he probably thought, here's another guy trying to sell me his dumb milkshake, right? And I put the focus on instead where my passion was and how I was going to help, how I wanted to help people. And, and I didn't push him harder. Like, you know, well, let me overcome your objections. You know, from my re recollection, you could stand to lose a few kilos, buddy. <laughs> right? No. I mean, it's like, we used to joke that you can't go up to an overweight person and say, I can help you. They, you can't help somebody who, right? You, you just offend people if you identify their problems for them. They have to identify their problems and then you help with solutions. So if, I don't know if that helps, but um, I would just look at people like that. So when you're keeping people in, people who trust you, even if they said they're interested, keep them in Teamsies so that you can build a relationship with them. Don't try to push the business on them. Stay in touch with them. And you can share your business successes with them without pushing it on them so that they're aware of it, right? And they may change their mind interest-wise down the road. The other people I would put in your list are the ones that, these are people I would really love to have part of this. You know, as you're looking at those contacts, these are the people I would really love to have a part of this and, and do your best to build a relationship with them. It won't work for all of them. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. All right, let's take one more question and I'll Eric? let you guys get to bed. Yeah, Eric, um, just one question. First of all, I'm glad you're a um, dog lover. When I'm in South California, I'll come and take, I'm a pet portrait, I do pet portrait photography. I'll come and do portraits of your pets. Oh, awesome. <laughs> but I was just wondering, are we, have you done any groups with our boomerang before? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Because have you, have you ever seen our boomerang, a video about our boomerang? Yes, I have. I've been, have. 
So, yeah. so you know all about how customers work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. In the end, it's about making the connection person to person, having mm -hmm. somebody receive yeah. the value and see it as a solution to their problems. Oh yeah. Right? That's yeah. universal. But yes, I have, I have seen it. It's been pitched to me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell oh, you, really? it's, it's been pitched to me a few times and then I'm like, do you, have you not ever seen any of my videos? Mm -hmm. Like, do you really, yeah. did you really think that was going to work with me today? They didn't, they didn't, they thought, didn't, they didn't read the small print on that one, Eric. No, I mean, <laughs> I thought that's what Mary were doing then. I thought Mary yes, was teaching you there. <laughs> uh, maybe she was setting it up. I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you. That's like, what I'm just saying because, because like, you know, we talk, we, we just not, I'm personally not contacting customers because half of them I will never know because yeah. codes are going to go through and I will never ever know a customer, but I'm just talking to people about it. Yeah. And then cards go off and then they have the, they get the, you know, the code and, and they're going to be distributed and 800,000 customers with only 65 uh, TSAs, you know, 65, there's no way. 65,000, Mary. 800? 65,000 TSAs, 65, not 65. <laughs> yeah. It's going to keep up with 800,000 and it's just going to be 2 million by the end of the year. So those yeah. are the numbers you're dealing with, but I just wondered, yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah. I just was speaking. It's kind of like, it, you know, if like, for example, I, um, I have an iPhone. How many of you guys use Apple products, Apple electronics? Yeah. Have you ever tried outside of the retail store? Have you ever tried to talk to a human being at Apple? It's impossible. They don't have human yeah. beings that they don't have human beings that do customer service at Apple. It's impossible to find somebody. You have to go to a store if you want to talk to a human being. Yeah. It's impossible. No, no, that's, no, you don't. I got a really good guy on the technical side the other day who phoned me up within two minutes of me saying, phone me up. They were brilliant. Oh, well, they don't do that here, but maybe it's different because of the pandemic and the stores are closed. But yeah, I think it is. You know, the point is, is how cool would it be? That experience you just had, Beverly, how cool would it, it be to, have, to know somebody there? Yeah. and have somebody that if you had a question you know so this is the point it's just like hey i'm your person i'm here yeah. for you if you need anything i'm yeah. going to check in twice a year you know you don't have to be in regular contact every month in these situations but having some of that personal contact is huge oh i do have questions about the business you know like so having a person to talk to this is you know i know it's designed for for speed like that but having that connection makes people feel like they have an inside makes them yeah. more likely to ask right does this make sense so it's yeah. like you've got you've got a fire going this is just extra gasoline you can put on the fire but yeah. um if that makes sense yeah. but um yeah it's like i would love to have a now like facebook is another one where you don't have a person but see because i spend my brother's it, had a horrendous experience with google he's locked out of google uh, google mail he can't get in yeah, it's and hard, it's right? Anyone. Now, if you spend if you spend a quarter million dollars or more a year on advertising, then you have a person. Yeah. Like I have yeah. a Google person and I have a Facebook person that I can call. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, that's really outside of my realm, but let me check for you. And it feels great for me to have a person. It's like I had to I had to buy it with blood money, right? But so that's my point is um, it's a great system, but just somebody knowing they have a point of contact is huge. It's a big deal. So I think that'd be, I think that's great. You know, I, I miss it. You know, I, we're allowed to eat at restaurants in Southern California only if it's outdoor dining right now, right? We're in this like draconian moment. I don't know how it is where you guys are. And, but, but the servers don't come to the table. Like you don't even, like you sit outside at a table, there's an iPad on the table and you put in your order and then somebody brings the food and, and like hands it to you like you're plague infected. And then they never come back. They don't clear a dirty napkin. They don't take anything off the table because afterwards they have to, you know, hose it down or something. So they never come back. You're sitting in with your trash all around you and it's time to pay. And it's like, you go to the iPad and then it's like, how much tip would you like to leave? It's like, tip? <laughs> I mean, I, I leave bigger tips than I ever have because I feel for those servers because they're mostly yeah. out of work and, you know, but they certainly aren't, there's, there's no human interaction, you know, and it's no. like, so no, it's, it's we miss it. We, we're hungry for it. People are so hungry for human interaction. This is why you guys right now, especially, especially during pandemic time, um, people are going to respond at a, at a, at a huge rate Yeah. because we, yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, somebody's, can, somebody's talking to me. This mm. is great. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. So we'll thank you so much for your time. We really My appreciate pleasure. it, all of us. A big round of applause. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Really, really good, Eric. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate your time. Um, we will um, learn and we will stay in contact. My pleasure. And I will uh, get you the recording a little bit later this evening. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. God bless y'all.